Hi, this is Arlene. I am an entrepreneur and I am a top blogger for Fanbox.com. I have a successful relationship blog and I wanted to create a show about dating, relationships, and life in Los Angeles. This is my friend Brooke, a host and celebrity interviewer. This is Jenny, who has been on many red carpet events. And this is my fun-loving friend Gina, who is a career-driven woman and loves to let loose outside of the office. These are my friends, and we are the women of the Melting Pot, where women of different ethnicities and ages come together to discuss various life topics. Hi everyone, this is Arlene again at the Melting Pot, and I'm here with Brooke, Jenny, and Gina. Um, and today's topic is about breakups. So you guys, well, what's a deal breaker? What's a, the top three reasons why you would break up with a guy? Gina. Well, I guess the obvious one off the bat is um, cheating and infidelity. Like they say, once a cheater, always a cheater. So those are things that we have to, you know, definitely watch out for and, and not tolerate in our relationships. Um, for me, I need attention. So <laughs> if I feel like a guy is not giving me as attention as I'm giving him or like not putting effort into the relationship as much as I am, like that's a deal breaker for me because it just seems like they don't care as much as I do. I think for me, it's the switch up. I mean, you know, saying that you want the same things as me and then switching it once you have me, that's, I've had that happen so many times, you know, the guy says, yeah, I want to get married and all these things. And so he has me and then all of a sudden, like, I don't think I'm, you know, ready, you know, maybe a couple of years from now, I'm done with that. So it's a total deal breaker for me. Cheating for sure, infidelity, I would never tolerate that. Um, also, if, if a guy is, lied to me about something something big or f fail to tell something um, like withhold information um, like for instance I I was dating this guy for a couple months and I found out that he had some kind of a drug problem and to me that's a big that's a big deal that's a big thing I actually have a story I was dating a guy and um, we we're at brunch and so he decided to tell me that he had a mental problem he tells me that he you know frequents uh, the mental institution as he, <laughs> as he calls it. <laughs> And that his parents have a drawer for him when things get out of hand. So in my mind, I'm like, as soon as I get home, I'm done with my eggs, my white fish, and my bagel. I'm breaking up with him, like, immediately. And I don't have anything against, you know, people with mental problems. It's just, I want to make an informed decision right. with all the information about you, you know, right away. But men don't always, Yeah, before you, know, you invest. Yeah, yeah rather than falling in love yeah. with them and then starting to care about them. And then all of a sudden, they just drop this bomb attitude. on you. Right. Exactly. It's like, tell me up front, right? Totally. <laughs> What's the worst way you guys have broken up with a guy? Change my number. Call not calling. Not answering the phone. Walk on like Facebook. It. I know that's probably like the most hurtful thing, right? Like they go to check your profile and you're just not there anymore. I mean, if they can't reach you, then it's just that's bad. Yeah, that's SOS. I mean, what do you? I mean, we tell the guy over and over again, like you're doing this wrong. You know, yeah. I need this, and they don't listen. Yeah. I mean, after a while, you just you have to make a really big power move. Yeah. And mine was I changed my number. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my story. It's true. Mine, I'm not proud of, but things were just not going well, and I, there was another guy, and I just instead of like hurting him, being like, okay, I can't do this anymore, I just hurt him even worse, just with the other guy, which mm -hmm. I'm never gonna do it again. <laughs> yeah, when, when I've been in relationships where I kind of want to see the end of it, um, usually I try to, you get to a point where you start instigating, you know, you try to make oh, it yeah. so that, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm not, you know, this isn't good or that's not good. Um, trying to get that person maybe to, like, be motivated to say, okay, you know what, let's just, you know, call it quits. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, that doesn't work sometimes. <laughs> so you have to be the one that finally gets <laughs> the nerve to be like, okay, look, I, I just can't go on. I'm like you. I'm, I'm a little bit too nice in the beginning, where I was like, I'm just kind of like, um, kind of like telling, pushing the issue a little bit, and then if it just it just doesn't work, then I eventually will probably have to tell them straight out, like, okay, this is not working. Being alone isn't a bad thing, you know. It's like that. The end of a relationship just means the beginning of really getting to know yourself.